uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Let's talk about doing nothing and how that is possibly the best thing you can do in PUBG Mobile. And I know this sounds crazy, but stick around. We're going to figure this one out. And I'm going to talk you through exactly where the headspace is at here. Because PUBG Mobile is a fantastic game. It's a modern three-dimensional chess match uh, featuring weapons and stats and numbers and metas and um, attachments and scopes and everything. And it's crazy how much is going on in the game and how much you have to process on a second-by-second -second basis. Um at weighing up your hot drop opportunities, your armor profile, what you think the enemy is likely to have. Do they even have a weapon yet? Your mate's not. You've got to go and fulfill an obligation to him as your bosom buddy. You've got to keep kill him alive. And these are the things that happen in PUBG Mobile. And it's one of the reasons why the game is so brilliant because there is a decision tree that starts tough and doesn't get any easier. Um, and a lot of people will tell you, let's just go clap cheeks, bro. You just clap cheeks. That's all you're going to do. And they're idiots because that's not how the game works. Um, PUBG Mobile is fun because it's challenging. Anyone else who tells you different is kidding themselves. Anyone who is a real player who doesn't use extrasensory perception uh, drugs um, is... Oh, Mr. Ouija, I forgot you laughed at that. <laughs> that guy went to thirst him. Uh, I found a gun just in time, uh, is not going to win 100% of the games. Hell, even the best people on YouTube that I watch, like Fates and Athena and guys like that and girls like that, they don't win 100% of the time. One of the things that's different between them and most other people I find is that when they lose, they're not surprised. They don't act like it's the craziest thing in the world, like some of us mere mortals do. Where the hell was I? Yeah, anyway. Um, but it is a hard game, and it's one of the reasons why it's so hard sometimes not to do anything. Like, timing is everything. I get kill them. Ten seconds for this to get here. They muck around, and literally, as the revive hits, I just start shooting the stairs, and it's just long enough. That's... that's that's the difference in this game between a win and a loss. It's it's a split second. It's movement. It's tactics. It's teamwork. Uh, it's armor. It's everything. But now I want to talk to you about how this can be a trap. This can be a trap when you start playing the game like this. Um, you fall into a habit of not really just not respecting the enemy, but of not really paying attention and feeling like you've got to do something. And sometimes what you have to do is stay alive. This is a game Mr. Ouija and I are in. And it has been a very, very tough game. Uh, we couldn't find vehicles. We were wandering around for ages. Uh, we got stuck, but pincered between multiple squads. And we just couldn't get it done. And some days you're the hammer, some days you're the nail. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Even the late game, when the circle is hurting this much, when the blue is stinging this much, and you've got people to the northeast and you've got people to the southwest, you just have to tough it out. You have to grit your teeth and live. And if you play competitive, this is no news to you, but one of the things the competitive guys don't tell you is that you've got to be alive at the end to win this. You can't win the game if you're dead halfway through. And people try to emulate the sprays. People try to emulate the quick flick headshots and the, you know, the squad wipes and all that. And you'll see the tier one scrim highlight reel from everyone, right? But what people don't talk about enough is that this kind of play is what's necessary sometimes to get you across the line. Sometimes you just absolutely have to stay alive even when it feels like nothing is going your way. When you've got zero kills, there's 16 people left, you, you know, you're dropping meds for your friend, you're just desperately trying to get across the line, you're reviving in the blue, and there's someone else holding you out again. This is when doing nothing is the best policy, where you just literally can't do anything that is going to get you across the line. And this is the problem. When you fall in love with the whole ethos of I'm a mad fragger, um, things 
become it becomes less of a game and more of a chess beating. Um, and I've always loved the tactical side of PUBG Mobile. Just grinding it out can actually be a really rewarding experience. Eventually, if you hold long enough, if you work hard enough, you'll get an opportunity. And when that opportunity comes, don't muck around. Take the opportunity, smash them, get across the line, and get the win. And this is what I'm talking about. You can see these guys were running out here to get the loot. They were like, oh, you must have a M24. I want his M24 or something. And just like that, we've gone from absolutely no hope to getting the job done. And it it's two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Sometimes you're running in the blue and you're pinned by squads and you just can't get out from under the water to take a breath. This is really hard when you're playing like that to actually work and get some kind of reward for it. But if you play the game towards the end like it matters, if you treat your hit point pool like it matters, you don't make stupid trades, you can do some amazing things. These guys are actually... I was really impressed by this. We're 400 meters outside the circle holding these guys out. We've trashed their car and... They couldn't move. We kept headshotting them. We kept knocking them. I love gameplay like this. We got pushed by another duo. And uh, while that happened, these guys took the opportunity, I thought, to push. I saw someone pushing, right? I can see a guy running down there. Mr. the Weege is there. That's cool. What they did was they put the smoke up. One guy ran. And then his mate stayed behind and covered. And... They tried to leapfrog their way in. This is the joy of PUBG Mobile. They were hammered for so long. They had no chance for so long. We've been sitting on the top of this mountain having the best time. They had a tiny little window that they worked to get, and they took it, and they nearly pulled it off. Um, one of them got across. The other one started following, and he's just suppressing now. He knows he's in trouble. He had a window. That was all there was. They did their best. That guy had to get to that rock and hold so his mate could get through, and they just couldn't quite get it done. But I love this style of PUBG Mobile. I love the challenge. This is the gameplay you want. You want smart people against you. You want people who know what they're doing. You want games that matter and games that count. There's no point getting a 37-kill game against a bot lobby uh, on the South American server while, you know, on your next account that's got Bushka with an A and a schwa over the top of it. Now... This is, I'm sorry, if that sounded a little bit harsh. <laughs> this is an example of just taking forever. It took us forever here. We didn't see any opportunities. We're outside the circle. There's a full squad on the hill overlooking us. And we just did nothing for a long, long time. Even with a knock like that, Watch we just out. held, we just held, we just held. Until eventually we saw an error. I don't know if you noticed, I marked someone down to my left. Um, and one of the things that you'll find a lot of teams will do is even when they're in a strong, strong, strong position like this, and this is a strong position, they screw it up by trying to do too much. They get greedy. They have flanked. They've split up and they've flanked along this ridge line. And this is something I've talked to Gangsy about before. And he said in PMCO, there are a lot of people who do this kind of thing, a lot of competitive guys who send a flanker around while the main force of the squad holds until they create a pincer. But if you're quick to that, and if you've really paid attention, you can just smoke the crap out of everything, get across the dead ground, and suddenly they know they're in trouble. And this is what I'm talking about. This is where you move with a purpose. You're not just rolling around the countryside looking for frags. You're not just making trades and sprays and waiting for the circle to finally close you down and shut you up. You're moving as a unit, and you're not just making busy. You're actually making good decisions, good tactical decisions. And sometimes that just means waiting. It just means being patient. It means actually doing nothing, which is what we did for a long time until the moment came. Then we did a whole lot of stuff and walked away a winner. And this squad had had our number dead to rights for a very, very long time. I felt good to get this win. It was a great game by Killam, great game by Mr. Ouija. It was a very straightforward game by us. 
I hope you guys took something away from that. I hope you um, can refine that down for yourself and work on it. Um, when you when you play seriously, it can be its own reward. Uh, it doesn't always have to be seriously. Obviously, there's a time for fun and a time for frolic. But turning something around like that and getting their sneaky flank and making it a sneaky get wrecked. <laughs> It's a whole lot of fun. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. Lots of stuff coming up. We're giving away another phone in the next couple of weeks. So remember to join the Discord server. Link is in the description below. Subscribe to the channel. Like the videos. And as always, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.